Okay, we've time for one more talk, and I think we've got Chris. Yep. Mm. All right, he's going to talk about Ember data. Yeah. So, have you got speaking that? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it quick. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Hello. Hello. Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Manson. You might know me from co-organizer of Dublin JS, and I've got a consultancy working on Ember stuff and full stack JavaScript. Mm. Lots of fun. Uh, today I'm going to give a brief history of Ember data, which is quite challenging because I've only got five minutes and it's one of the bigger parts of Ember. So, and also there may be pizzas arriving halfway through, so I might start a riot. Okay, as ever, it's always good to get a bit of context, so let's start with a little bit of history. Um, <clears throat> back in the bad old days of Ember JS, during the 1.x uh, time, um, Ember was always Ember data was always beta release. It took until the very end of the 1x series for there to be a 1.0 <coughs> release. And obviously, because it was only beta, there was never anybody who was using it in production because that would be silly. Um, and of course, the 1.0 release came out in 1.13 and was called 1.13, so there was never a 1.0 final, which is fun. Um, but the, one of the things to think of, and one of the questions that you get when you hear a story like this is, why was it so hard? Why did it take so long for Ember data to actually get to a stable release? Well, Tom Dale, when asked about this, said that when they started developing Ember data, they were thinking of it as a kind of database in the browser. But actually, when they, when they started implementing that, they figured out that it was more of a distributed system and distributed systems are hard. So uh, it's always a good idea to use other people's uh, uh, abstractions so that you don't have to implement them so our overlords handed down Ember data for us. Um, <coughs> so now that I've given a bit of an intro and a bit of history, what does it actually look like? And as David said with the kind of abstractions, this is quite high up on the abstraction uh, scale. So what we have here is a definition of a model. So if anybody's done an ORM before, they will have seen something like this. This is very familiar stuff. So you have a definition of what, in this case, a meetup looks like. It has attributes. Some of the things are types, such as strings and dates. And you also have at the bottom the uh, relationships. So we have a <coughs> organizer and we have many attendees. Uh, that's where the magic of Ember data comes in. So what does that actually look like? What you've got in this situation here is a definition of what your data looks like. When you want to actually get data, when you're talking about Ember data, you have to use this thing called a store, which you should be able to see there in the top example. Um, what I like to think of when thinking of what is the store is it's kind of like a sidekick who knows what data you've already got, so what you've already requested and has a little cache of what you know about, and also knows where to go and get data that you actually need. So in this case, we're asking the store for all of the meetup instances, thank you very much, David, um, that the system knows about. What that ends up doing is it sends a request over the network and says, you know, the, the store itself knows where to go and get that, and we'll come back to that in a minute. And what we have here is a template, very similar to what Pat showed us in the Glimmer world. It's, uh, this is the more Ember style templates. But you can see there we're just eaching over this uh, collection of meetups and we're outputting the name and the description. Very simple stuff, very uh, overly simple in fact, because <laughs> that's not very useful. Um, but hold on fellas, because we're going to get very interesting very quick. I'm going to add one line and things are going to get very real. What's the difference? Can anybody notice it? We've got at the bottom, we've got organizer. We're outputting the organizer, but you can see that it's meetup.organizer.name. We didn't see that in the original definition of an organizer. I actually don't have an example of it here, so that's my fault. Um, <laughs> what actually happens when you run this, you see a uh, an app load up, 
and it shows some of the details, like I said, the name and description of the talk, but if you look real close, the organizer's name doesn't load until a second later. So what happens there is our little sidekick, who knows about the meetups, because we're saying show all of the meetups, gets this meetup object, and then it notices when you use the organizer in the template. So when you use the organizer in the template, it says, oh, hold on a second, I don't have that data yet, so I'm going to go to the network and go get that for you, and then let the template know that I have that data and you can update it now. So that's also a little bit of a simple example. But well, what this can also allow you to do is some really cool stuff. So this is all of the uh, attendees. And you can see here there's a little bit of a funny uh, loading uh, process. That's just because I put a weight on the server side of this. So it's, um, it's, it's showing you that actually there's lots of requests coming in. So if you have a look here, this is what it looks like from the network side of things. You'll see, if you're quick, you'll see the meetups coming in. Then you'll see the organizer loading. And then you'll see all of the attendees loading separately. And they only load once it's added into the template, which is kind of awesome if you ask me. Um, so <coughs> the skeptical people in the room will probably be thinking, OK, that's great. I've already got an API. And this will probably only work in a very specific kind of way. And although there is a golden path, and if you use JSON API, it makes it much easier, you have, uh, Ember Data gives you a way to actually intercept various parts of the stack and allow you to translate either the payloads or the requests that actually go to the network. I don't have time to go through that, so I would really recommend that you all go and watch Godfrey Chan's uh, 2015 EmberConf talk about hacking uh, or hijacking Hacker News. This is using Ember data to read HTML and parse it as data objects, which is loom. It's crazy. <laughs> A++ would watch again. I would definitely recommend it. So that is a little bit of a whirlwind uh, overview of what Ember data is. If anybody wants to ask me any of these questions later on, that's fine. <laughs> um, or anything else, please feel free. And uh, that is it.